Hey Eagles, I'm Dries. Thank you for joining us today. Welcome to Teeny Good Connect, where you discover, connect, and achieve. Think of this as a special clubhouse where you're invited to use the comment box to share your thoughts and answers. So let's make this club awesome. So the goal of these sessions is to benefit students in their preparation for the Teen Eagle competition events. We aim to guide students through the content of the film and the book, offering strategies and tools to aid their study. Additionally, we provide guidance on sample questions and how to approach them and answer them. Awesome. So let's begin. These are the 2024 Teen Eagle resources for Teen Eagle 2. We have the book Positively Teenage and the film The Great Gilly Hopkins. Please let me know in the comment box what you thought of the book and the film. So why have we chosen the book Positively Teenage and the film The Great Gilly Hopkins? Well, it's simple. It's not just for learning. It's a super fun, emotion-packed, language-boosting, mind-blowing adventure that you won't want to miss. So let the learning party begin. In the previous sessions, we covered chapter one, two, and three. And in today's session, we will be covering chapter four and five. So chapter four deals with positively brain Lee. So in this chapter, it tells us practice makes perfect. So this section explains how the brain learns by forming pathways between neurons, emphasizing effective learning practices like space learning, taking breaks, and asking for help, as well as correcting your mistakes. So use a lot of areas of your brain. So by doing different activities when you're young, it will help your brain. So imagine a girl who learns Italian but stops. Right. When she's older, it's easier to relearn because her brain remembers. So try many things while you are young. So try to do as many things as you enjoy while you are young. Even if you stop, it's OK, but the skill stays. Right. So have fun, learn and try and challenge yourself. So that's what chapter four covers. It also tells us to try new things or to do old things differently. So the author encourages us to step out of our comfort zones and explore new activities. So there are new experiences or even temporarily to try new things, right? So even if it's for a short time, that's also fine. It also tells us that the message is to embrace curiosity and to challenge ourselves. And it tells us that we need to have a hobby. So having hobbies is fun and great for your brain. You can try physical activities like swimming, dancing or martial arts or mental activities, which include reading, coding and science clubs. So get creative with your writing, art or baking, nature, ecology, gardening and volunteering are cool activities to do as well. As long as you enjoy your hobbies, let me know down in the comment section what hobby you have or what hobbies you would like to have. Awesome. So manage your screen time. So limit your screen time during family meals and school, and this will help you better focus and employ better ways to use or your study or effective learning practices. So keep your phone out of sight while working and employ the if then strategies to resist temptations. So for example, if I play PlayStation, then I need to study for two hours. I hope you do. <laughs> Awesome. So let's look at some effective learning practices. We have space learning, which is to distribute learning across sections for better long term memory. Taking breaks, arrest and diverse activities during breaks enhance your information processing. Asking for help is also really important. So seek assistance from teachers or your parents or attempt to solve the problems independently first. So there's also different learning styles. So customize your learning with visual aids, speaking aloud or self-testing. The chapter also tells us we can rewrite and self-test, which is to summarize the content in your own words for better understanding. So pose a question and answer it for self -test testing. Awesome. And it's important to correct your mistakes. So correct errors immediately to avoid reinforcing incorrect pathways in the brain. So as soon as you make a mistake, try and correct it immediately. So you know what is the correct answer or the correct action, right? So you don't learn the wrong thing constantly. Awesome. Right, let's go on to chapter five. Chapter five deals with positive about 
people. So chapter five encourages us to talk face to face. So effective face to face communication is vital for job interviews, persuasion and friendship. So practice conversations and maintain eye contact and show interest. So overcoming shyness is also important and severe social anxiety may require professional help. However, you can develop these skills by enhancing your social interactions and it will lead to an overall healthy well-being. So value good friendships. So acknowledge the importance and the quality of friendships by understanding that challenges are temporary and life changes and new friends can be found. So don't let friendship issues affect your self-esteem as others may be dealing with their own problems. So prioritize having a few close friends than having a large group of people who don't really want the best for you or aren't really quite friendly. So treat your close friends kindly, share in their joys and distance yourself from toxic relationships when necessary. Chapter five tells us that we need to trust caring adults. So while conflicts with parents are normal, during adolescence, they often pass. So you can seek support from trusted adults, including parents, teachers, and organizations like Child Line. In chapter five, it, it tells us how we can grow our empathy. So empathy naturally emerges around the ages from three to four due to the theory of mind. So learn from personal experiences and other stories to foster an understanding. Storytelling, which is a timeless platform, um, practice enhances emotional comprehension and builds connections. So cultivating empathy is essential for understanding diverse reactions and building positive relationships and do things for others. That's also really important. So doing kind gestures like holding doors or hugging someone or helping your neighbor fosters empathy, which contributes to positive relationships and well-being. So what are some things you can do for others that are kind gestures and that are just there out of your own heart? What do you think you can do? Let me know in the comments. I've already given you some 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 um suggestions. I'll just repeat them one more time. You can hold doors, you can hug someone when they're sad if they would like a hug or help your neighbors, help your parents with the groceries or the dishes, right? Help your teacher clean the classroom. So doing things for others is a good thing, especially when you want to have a positive relationship with other people. Awesome. So why do you think positive relationships with your friends and adults are important during teenage years? Take a moment to pause the video and reflect on this question. Right, so positive relationships with friends and adults are important during the teenage years because they provide support, understanding and a sense of belonging. So helping teens navigate challenges and a bold, strong foundation for their future is also in relation to positive relationships. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Sorry, sorry about that. Right. How can empathy help improve your relationships with others? Take a moment to pause the video to reflect your answer. Right, so empathy can improve relationships by fostering understanding and connections. When you understand and share other feelings, it builds trust and cooperation with others, making relationships more positive and fulfilling. And the last discussion question, what are some examples of effective communication? Is yelling at one another an, an example of effective communication? No, right? So examples of effective communication include active listening, clear expression of thoughts and feelings, and using I statements and being open to feedback. So good com communication helps avoid mistakes and strengthens relationships. 
Right, let's look at the vocab list. So we have empathy, with me, which means the ability to understand and share feelings and perspectives of others, which is often accompanied by compassion and kindness. We have understanding when you can comprehend or get something like a concept or another person's feelings. It's when you get what's happening or why it's happening. Boundaries, personal limits or guidelines that individuals establish to protect their emotional well-being, relationships and personal space. Cognitive, which means relating the mental process of perception, memory, reasoning and decision making. Neurons, which is the basic building blocks of the nervous system responsible for trans transmitting information within the brain and concentration, the ability to focus on task or subject without distraction and the last vocab word is network. So groups of people with whom one is connected, often formed through friendships, relationships or professional associations. So I would like you guys to pause the video and choose a word and then see if you can construct a sentence while incorporating that word. So kindly share your sentences in the comment section down below. I would love to read the sentence you construct. Awesome. So let's look at some key points from the film, The Great Gilly Hopkins. So we will be focusing on the setting. So the setting in the movie is where and when the story happens, like the place and the time that the characters exist. So the setting of The Great Gilly Hopkins is primarily in a small town in Maryland, United States. So Gilly is placed in foster homes of Mam Trotter, where the houses and surroundings are typical of a suburban neighborhood in a small town. So these settings reflect an environment that is conducive to building family bonds and connections. Gilly wishes to go to California to visit her mother. So the desire to go to California becomes a significant aspect of Gilly's journey and influences the narrative as she navigates through different environments and relationships. But the main setting of the Great Gilly Hopkins is primarily in a small town in Maryland, United States, in Mam Trotter's foster home. Awesome. So let's do a quick activity on the Great Gilly Hopkins. In which state does the main part of the story take place in the Great Gilly Hopkins? Take a moment to pause to see if you can choose the correct answer. Is it A, California, B, Maryland, C, New York, or D, Texas? If you chose B, Maryland, you are correct. Well done. Right, so Gilly has just moved to a new foster home. What challenges might she encounter in adjusting to this new environment? Is it A, difficulty making friends in a new neighborhood? B, adapting to new house rules and routines? Or C, navigating different school dynamics? Or could it be all of the above? Take a moment to pause the video to see if you can choose the correct answer. If you chose D, you are correct. Well done. It is all of the above. These are all of the things that she can encounter and find challenging, which is difficulty making friends, adapting to a new house and routines with the rules and navigating different school dynamics. So how can we study the resources? Well, it's simple. All you have to do is make a schedule, plan when to read, watch the films, do the worksheets and practice the spelling. Watch the movie multiple times. I mean, how awesome is that? So watch the film more than once to catch all the details and do a character analysis or focus on the characters. So pay attention to character development and actor portrayals. Take chapter notes when reading the book. So take notes after each chapter on key events and questions and break it down. So divide the book into manageable sections or chapters to avoid feeling overwhelmed and connect with personal experiences. So it's important to relate the content to your own experiences, which can enhance comprehension and retention. So in the book, you, you might have noticed there are a lot of activities for you to do. So please do them because they will help you connect it with your own personal experiences. Awesome. So stay connected and stay consistent. So keep it simple and consistent for better results. Remember that the key is to enjoy the process of learning.
right? This is just a reminder to explore our study materials. It's there for your benefit. All you have to do is sign into your Teen Eagle dashboard, click on resources, choose your Teen Eagle category and start studying. This is just a preview of the study materials that are on the website. We have chapter summaries, worksheet activities, spelling bee word lists, and movie analysis. So how can you benefit from the study materials? Well, it will improve your understanding, increase your English skills, expand your vocab, prepare you for the competition. It's there for hands-on learning. It's going to give you a confidence boost and it's going to prevent information overload. So the type of questions you can expect for the online rounds, you will have 60 minutes for 60 questions, which include multiple choice and true or false. In the global finals, you will have 45 minutes for 45 questions, which include multiple choice, matching and true or false questions. So by now you should know the type of questions you will be ex you will be receiving during the online rounds or the global panels. So we have what questions, how questions, why questions, true or false questions, and matching questions. Awesome. So how do you answer the questions? All you have to do is take your time when it comes to reading the questions and do so carefully. At least aim for one minute per question. Cross out the wrong answers. This will help you focus on the correct one and match logically. And be precise when it comes to true or false. So true means everything is correct and false means at least one mistake. So it is wrong. So please be precise with that. Stay calm and positive. Keep calm, stay positive and trust what you Have you joined the Teen Eagle world yet? If not, don't miss out. Head over to the Teen Eagle webpage and join the flock now. You can sign up for any Teen Eagle event, access study materials, and connect with the Teen Eagle community. Awesome. So please stay up to date and follow us on our social media channel. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We will do our best to try and help you. Or you can consult our guidebook on our web site's download page. So that's a wrap up on our Teen Eagle Connect Club session. Thanks for tuning in. I hope to see you next Thursday for Teen Eagle Connect Club. Until then, stay awesome and happy learning.